Hi, I'm Dr. Krishan Rama, the founder and director of Thrive Chiropractic. Thank you so much for being here and for sticking with us in this series. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about energy and what we mean by that is how can we have more? What happens to it? Um, you know, why is it that some people have lots and some people don't have enough or that you can kind of go through the day doing okay and then crash or, you know, wake up tired like that. What's going on with our energy? So this is what we've observed, as I said, in our like 50,000 patient visits in practice is that it's freely available for everybody, but depending on how our nervous systems use it, we can feel more tired. So we notice a lot of people might come to us toward the end of the week, say so Wednesday or Thursday, and like, I don't have enough energy, I'm feeling tired, or I'm feeling stressed, or I have a headache, but their muscles are really tight, even when they lie down on the table. And this is key, because that tells me, even when they're lying down without gravity, you know, even when they're lying down in bed trying to rest, their brain and nervous system is not switching off to take the tension out of the muscles. As I'm standing here now, my legs should be a little tense, so they're holding me upright. But when I lie down without gravity, my body should relax because a table or a bed or whatever I'm lying on the floor is taking the weight for me. So one thing we've observed is that people who don't have enough energy frequently have tense muscles. And I'm sure you've experienced this, you know, rubbing a loved one's shoulders when they're tired or tense. You know, they're not nice and soft and floppy. They're, they're really hard. And what that tells us is, it's not that they don't have enough energy. It's that their nervous system is not using the energy they have wisely. So if you can get the nervous system to use it more effectively, boom. You, know, you don't need to add any more energy magically. You just need to liberate the bound up energy. And the way we notice that when we meet people is, you know, one shoulder might be higher, the neck might be twisted, you might you know, visibly be able to see muscle tension, their posture may be rounded forward or off to one side, etc. etc. Et All these things are clues that people have what I call bound up energy that should be moving freely. And there's three places in our nervous system we do it. One is the muscles I've talked about, and I started there because in some ways it's the most obvious to feel and notice. The second is in our bones, like our bones can be nice and soft like these bones in my muscles. They're obviously strong, but they're pliable, but bones can get rigid. You may have seen people on the beach or ever in an evening dress and you look at someone's spine and you can like, it's like the nobbles in their back are pushed out, like that's, that's when the vertebrae are like a little bit tense. They're not quite as flexible and supple as they should be. And the third one, which is a bit more difficult to uh, observe posturally, is in our nerves. So, our nerves can either pull this way, forward and backwards, or, or side to side. And actually we tend to notice that in people's feet, believe it or not, because all, all the nerves end in people's feet. So for example, with little cliff, people have feet that point straight ahead. If you watch them when they walk, they're often very much in their power, they're a bit more visual, they kind of know where they're going, they're a bit more you know, on, as it were. And when people's feet turn out more, they can be more kinesthetic, they want to touch and hug and spend a bit more time. Just These are kind of little patterns you can observe with people's feet. And what the point is that's one way we can assess for the amount of tension uh, in someone's nerves. So the main thing is that we've noticed that people who come in without enough energy or feeling tired or feeling like they can't concentrate, often their muscles uh, are very tight. The second thing we've observed is when you're working with the nervous system, when you're working with people to find more energy, if you can get the brain, instead of focusing on, oh, this is really tight and there's a knot here, I just want someone to rub it or fix it. If you can say, hey, but up here, this is really soft. This works really well. Like You can find this. This, this is available. This is accessible. This, there's a part of your nervous system that is always resourceful, a bit like the eye of the storm. And we've observed if you can get people to find that first, then the brain's more able to deal with um, where it's more tense by itself and it can actually self-assess and start to self-change. So the approach we advise is, and what we found with our case studies is, when people are able to connect more with their body, and when, what I mean by that is, a lot of people walk around as if their body's job is just to carry their brain from meeting to meeting. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like this thing that we just assume that works. But, and we've all heard about different brain pathways, meaning, you know, is he left-brained or right-brained? Or, you know, is he in his hind brain, like his reptilian brain, or his, you know, more, you know, advanced brain? So we've got left to right, back and forwards. We've also got this really important but highly underused pathway, which is from the body, up to the brain. If you can access that information, if you can find that information flow, all of a sudden you open up a massive channel of resourcefulness that was previously there but just not being tapped into. 
So the, a few of the things I get asked all the time is, well, you know, well, how do you make that happen? And we'll be sharing with you some actual techniques you can use yourself. We have some of those on our website, so feel free to check those out. But the main thing is, is that the brain wants to check in with the body, but when we get stressed, when the fight or flight mechanism kicks in, our brain puts us into survival mode, which means <gasps> you know, a tiger could be about to kill me, so I need to focus outside myself because that's important for my survival. The problem is the things that are making us stressed or is getting us down today aren't trying to kill us, but it might just be a slow, continual burn or you know, a quick, continual burn of lots of things. So the first thing is to get the brain and body to pay more attention to one another, and that's perfectly possible for most people. The second thing is, rather than just trying, okay, so I've got this tension or I haven't got enough energy, just take me back to how I was before all this happened. The first thing to realise here is that, well, I can't go back to how I was before because I don't have a time machine. So trying to restore me, trying to take me backwards isn't going to work. So I fundamentally need to find a new way for myself to organise. I need to be more efficient than I was before. And what that means is it's a bit like if I walked into a business that had just had a major crash and said, don't worry, let's go back to last week. I would be laughed out of there, or at least I hope I would, because that's an absurd idea. But if I said, hey, how do we become more effective at serving our clients, and how do we communicate our message with the marketplace more effectively, it makes more sense. So the idea is to reorganize, meaning get the nervous system to connect with itself and to operate and upgrade in a completely new way. The last thing is that when, if the body's bound up and if someone's stressed and tensed and tired or haven't got the energy they want, it's that it's not being used efficiently. And I know I mentioned that before, but we can take that a step further because if I'm bound up in here and using all this energy inefficiently, I would get cramp if I kept doing this. If my brain can find that and move it, all of a sudden what was a problem before now actually becomes a thing that pushes me forward. So we, we find that the tension bound up in someone's body is actually the fuel, it's just lying latent, a bit like a volcano that hasn't erupted ready to move and help push the person on. And that's what we find is the most liberating thing with this approach. So a few things you can do at home to kind of help get this process started. The first is to start exploring your body and just, just with the simple idea of what works, like looking for what in your body and in your life works because you've got much more energy beginning with where you're successful, with where you're resourceful, with where you're capable, than with focusing heavily on what doesn't work. The second thing is to realise that most symptoms in the body, if not all symptoms, and I say most because, you know, sure, there, there could be an exception. Symptoms mean feedback, and they are useful feedback. I believe, and what I see in practice, is that most symptoms, if worked with properly, can help people improve their quality of life, rather than make their quality of life less. Because any symptom just means stop what you're doing, pay attention, and change something. And we've all experienced that by putting our hand on something too hot. <laughs> ah, stop, pay attention, oh, and we made a change. We retracted our hand. And it's the same with symptoms in our life. And if you're able to take that approach, meaning when a symptom happens, rather than my body somehow let me down, but go, hang on, it, it's trying to tell me something. Stop, pay attention, change something. That's how we notice that approach then leads into people's quality of life improving, they start this ability to reorganise, get things working more efficiently and ultimately enjoy life and feel more well and feel like they can take on more. The last thing is be willing to try something new, be willing to try a different approach, be willing to find a solution where you didn't know one existed or move in a different direction. And we find if people are able to do that, if they're willing to take that approach, then their nervous system has to, by definition, break out of the patterns it gets locked into because they can't keep doing what they used to do or put another way what used to work has to at some point no longer work so we have to find something new and as much as human beings don't tend to like that if you can do that you can often liberate a lot of energy and find a lot of potential that you didn't even know existed now we have a talk in our practice where i will actually show you how we do this hands-on, it's free of charge, it's open to the public. So we're gonna be sending you some information about that because we'd like to show you, and we actually do a live demonstration in the talk, how stress affects posture, affects our energy, and how you can start changing that in real time. So in our talk, we actually invite someone out of the audience and we'll, we'll show them how that works and we give them a chance to feed back to you what we noticed. We'll also be sending you an exercise. I'm not gonna show you here because it takes a couple of minutes longer and it's worth having its own time for 
it to be explained to you where you can see where in my body works, where have I got energetic, where's there resources available that I may be not aware of, and how can I use that to help my body open up where it's tense so that I can have a bit more energy, feel like I can take on a bit more, and feel like you know there's a bit more resourcefulness within me. As ever, I hope you found this useful. I'd love it if you'd share it with any friends or family who you think would benefit. If you have any questions or anything you'd like to know more, we're always here and we're more than happy to hear from you. Until the next video, bye for now.